Okay, so let's look at an example, another example of how to do a computation of a double integral set up in polar coordinates. And so for this one, we're going to find the volume of the solid between the plane z equals zero, so the xy plane, and the surface z equals one minus x squared minus y squared, which, as you may have noticed from the title, is a paraboloid. So it looks like this. We've got minus x squared plus y squared here. Well, let me amend that briefly. If I were to put it... Uh, like that, now you see, minus x squared plus y squared, sorry, I didn't pronounce my parentheses properly. Um, you see it opens downward, so it's this downward opening parabola right here. And then we're going to slice it by this plane here at z equals zero, and so we can see the region that we're, the volume that we're trying to figure out is, is this, this region in right here. Okay, so in order to do this, I need to set up an integral over this uh, purple domain D here. All right, so, um, so these surfaces, so uh, the z equals zero and the z equals one minus x squared plus y squared, intersect as usual where the equations are both satisfied. And that amounts to basically substituting one into the other for what we have here. So on the one hand, we have zero is equal to z. And on the other hand, we have z is equal to one minus x squared minus y squared. And so by combining these parts into one equation, I get um, x squared plus y squared equals one. So this is the unit circle. Okay. So if I draw a, a top-down uh, version or view of that one that we looked at right there, that's our domain of integration. And actually, you know what, those are terrible lines to put because we're gonna have to set this up uh, as an integral. So if we do the dy integration first like this, so we do dy first, um, then we're going to be looking at the integral. Let's see. So um, we go from minus square root one minus x squared up to positive the square root of one minus x squared. And then we have this um, function. Uh, and then we have dy. And then when we do dx, we see that the uh, first slice is here at uh, x equals minus one. And then the last slice is here at x equals 1. So we're going to be integrating from minus 1 to 1 the dx direction. OK, so <clears throat> um, now the first thing you notice about this integral is that it's a god awful hairy mess, right? There's, there's no way that we want to actually try and integrate this thing. Um, the next thing that you notice is that both the domain, the domain is radially symmetric. That means if I rotate the domain, it doesn't look any different because it's a circle, right? And then the other thing that you notice is that the um, integrand itself is a function of x squared plus y squared. And whenever you see that uh, a function only has x squared and y squared coming together in this form, or in this form, either one, that's telling you that the function itself is radially symmetric. And so both of these reasons right here are good hints that you probably want to switch into polar coordinates. Okay, so in this case, uh, let's see what we have. Well, if we are um, thinking of this in terms of r and theta, we've got for this circle, um, r goes from zero uh, to one, and it does that in every direction, from zero to one, from zero to one, from zero to one, etc. No matter which direction, no matter what theta we're talking about, we go out the same amount. So if I'd done that accurately, the, that would have formed a circle. Pretend it is so. Okay, so we have that um, 
the radius goes from 0 to 1. And then we're also taking all directions, theta, between 0 and 2 pi to go around the circle once. So <clears throat> we have 0 to 2 pi, um, 0 to 1. And then our new function is 1 minus r squared. And then we have our new dA, which is r dr d theta. And I just want to point out, don't forget the Jacobian. This is the easiest mistake to make. Don't be somebody who forgets this. All right, I guarantee you at least two people will make this mistake and forget to include the Jacobian on their midterm. And then I will write Jack to indicate that you got it jacked. Um, anyways, so where were we? Da, 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 da. Okay, so we've got our function, we've got our new domain. And yeah, so you can see this is going to be a much easier integral to integrate because um, in this land, in the r theta land, uh, oh, sorry, we're not doing theta first, we're doing r first. Um, on the r theta plane, this domain is actually a rectangle. And so the mapping from here to here, that's the one given by polar coordinates. Okay, so let's see, now we can just go ahead and, and uh, uh, do this integral. And so in fact, um, you notice that there is uh, no theta anywhere inside that integral. So we can just pull it out and do our usual, or not our usual, but do the simplification trick that we like to do whenever possible. And rewrite this as a, a product of single variable integrals. So the first one just ends up being two theta, no sweat. For the second one, we have to integrate uh, r minus r cubed. And that ends up, let's see, so we have, um, so if we integrate, so this is, uh, just make a side note here. This thing is r minus r cubed. And so when we integrate that, we get r squared over 2 minus uh, r to the fourth over 4. And that's evaluated from 0 to 1. Uh, so that gives us, uh, let's see, 1 half minus 1 fourth, uh, which is 1 fourth. So we have 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2. There's our answer. That's the volume underneath the paraboloid.